Well, guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Chris with M7 Battle Works. Uh, we're going to try to get a little bit accomplished today. It's pretty late in the day. I'm getting a late start just because of some things that were going on earlier. Um, so I don't have a, a big list today, but um, I think what I'd like to try to do is get the, um, it's like rubber web or mesh or what it's whatever it's supposed to be, a little gasket that the hood goes on. So I'd, I'd like to get this glued in place. And I've got a uh, glue, what did I do with my glue? So I'm gonna use this. I don't have any idea if it's any good. It's vinyl fabric, plastic, rubber, leather, wood, metal, glass, and ceramic. So, um, I, you know, I was talking to a buddy who's got the Super 55, and he said these don't have to be, you know, glued all the way across or anything like that. Your hood comes down and, and kind of pins that anyways. So I think I'd like to just get it glued in, in maybe the corner area and uh, maybe along the top just a little bit. So that's the plan. I've got some um, C-clamps that I'll use, some small C-clamps that I use to kind of hold this and, and maybe I'll draw this kind of snug across that and then put one on top as well. Something along those lines. Um, so let's get started. We'll just throw a little bit down in there. A little bit there. Maybe that's too much. I don't know. And then I think we'll put some on the end. Right in there. And the same on this side. Cap that. And if I need to put more elsewhere, I can. I mean, it won't be hard. And I know I ended the last video on, on kind of a, a blah <laughs> note. It just, it just kind of abruptly ended, and that's just kind of how the, the video worked out, the tape worked out. Um, I will try to not do that on this one, and I, I want to show you guys um, the results of some of the work that's been done, particularly the dash panel where the gauges and everything are at. And just kind of show you some of that. It's looking great. All right. Get that slid in place. All right. Loosen that up. I didn't really pull this. There we go. Well, guys, remember I said I'm, we might have to revisit this heat shield. So this lip that I, rem I left straight needs to be bent down um, because it does slightly, it's not much, but it does slightly interfere with my hood. So we're going to cut it, put it at a slight... Um, uh, angle down and then re-weld it. I might as well get the the rest of that. So there's the finished product. It's very thin metal, so to get that welding bead to lay down is not an easy task, nor is it necessary for this application. Give you an idea of the amount of bend I put down on it. Oh, that kind of helps you out a little bit knowing I'm not worried about these little runs. That's not going to bother me at all. This is probably barely going to be seen from under the hood. The hood itself came right down to the lip and was kind of bumping it a little bit 
to try to get it into place and so by having it you know a half inch higher it was giving it just a little bit of interference so that's why i ended up doing this i left it on for a couple of reasons one i didn't want to scratch the paint by by taking it off too early and two um it was protecting the inside of it you know from bugs and whatever wants to try to get inside i flushed this tank clean with diesel fuel and uh, so just a little bit coming out there, not much. All right, now I got just a little bit of cleaning to do here. Just kind of cleaning it up a little. gas sending unit has a comes with a rubber gasket so I don't want to use it um, I don't want to use that gasket maker on this for that reason so though wouldn't be the end of the world might actually help seal some of this stuff but I'm not gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and do it if you get one of these new I think this came from Corvez but um, there's probably lots of different makers out there but you do they are um, they are dependent on position, so you do have to, actually, I think I'll just get my gasket close. Yeah, so I was pretty close right there. <laughs> so at that, at that angle, you want to make sure that you check your float to make sure that it's not going to hit the sides. In this case, <clears throat> in this case, that dot represents that dot and it's running to the front of the tractor, which means this is perfectly perpendicular to the tractor, which means it's per perpendicular to the sides of the tank. So it's, it's, it's exactly where we need it to be. I have elected to go with some stainless bolts. Uh, the front doesn't have the um, captive nuts in it, so you have to you have to put the nuts in it yourself. So. This nut is a seven mil. Yeah, it's metric. Unfortunately, everything we're buying these days is probably from China. All right, that is secure. I reattached this. I did that in your high speed mode. So hopefully you saw that. I think what we'll do now is I think we'll set the um, I think we'll set the hood on here and then put the cap on and at minimum screw in our um, our bolt or our uh, sediment bowl just so that we don't have an open hole there. Again, that's that water-based gel and that'll just make that rubber grommet slip on there. I'm also putting some on it. We will find out, I'm sure. I'm going to take it easy and just try to work it on. This one's relatively small. And I 
got it, I've got the rubber over the spigot now and uh, just pushing it down. I don't like what I'm seeing so far. I'm kind of seeing a little bit of a crack in my rubber. There we go. Man. Man, don't try that without putting some lube in there. I'm telling you, that's a... Uh, that's a tight fit. Now, I've cracked my rubber. I'm not real happy about that. I do not feel like that should have cracked. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So you can see, there's a crack. Not too surprising, I had to stretch that considerably to get that over the pipe. Now, it had plenty of room inside the hole. Like I said, the, the grommet itself, you could move the thing around. It just didn't fill the, the hole. So it had to stretch pretty good to get over this. And um, I mean, I, and I had lube on it and everything and it still had to stretch pretty good. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm not gonna fret too much about that, but that's, that's it's irritating. That, I'm sure that'll crack. Uh, get a good hot day and that'll be split all the way through I'm sure so not, not much I can do about her now and we'll dump that off by putting the fuel cap on it there's our dash now if you guys remember this is the hole here that we we um, made smaller we cut a ring out and welded it in and did just a little bit of body work but um, and the reason for that is because the two gauges are not exactly the same size. This one is smaller than the original, but it looks just like the original, and it's supposed to be USA made. Um, so that's why I went with that one. This is the original tag. I just cleaned it up, painted those little screws there, and of course another reproduction, and I'm betting that's probably China because uh, they all seem to be the same for that one. So, and we do have a new steering wheel that we've got for it. We'll put that on a little bit later. So for now, I think I want to get these bolts down and that way we'll kind of pull that thing snug and uh, maybe help that rubber seat in there. Let's try to get this um, little sediment bowl in. It's already got a gasket and a filter. It's got the rubber gasket. I hope that that works. I don't generally have good luck with these sediment bowls in general. <laughs> so I've got some pink Teflon tape on there. Uh, that's not just regular Teflon, so that's kind of important. I don't want somebody putting that on thinking, or regular Teflon thinking that's okay. This is, um, a little bit heavier duty and it's designed for fuels. My particular tractor had a copper line coming from this um, sediment bowl. And so I'm gonna use this fitting right here. It's an adapter that goes, allows you to go from the bowl to your quarter inch copper tubing. So I'll just screw that in. And here I'm just securing the copper pipe to the actual um, sediment bowl. I chose to go with this fuel shutoff valve um, right in front of the carburetor because I just don't trust the sediment bowl shutoff valve very well. And these do a really good job. I'll eventually paint the um, little Liela clamps there. I've had this steering wheel for a while, and so it's time to put it on the tractor. Starting to button some of the more finished items up.
Man, doesn't that look good, guys? I tell you, it's a good feeling getting this. Um, you know, these types of things, the beauty um, part of the tractor, just fun getting those types of things on. Just looks nice with the gauges in the background. Just love it. Well, we accomplished quite a bit today, guys. Got the gas tank mounted and everything hooked up. Even got the fuel line hooked up. Got the hood on. Got these little rubber, I don't know what you call them, cushion deals. Now, I, I am going to change out some hardware here. I've got mismatching hardware on both sides, and um, they're really not what I want. I'm probably going to go to like a stainless something more similar to that with a stainless washer. I did do stainless here. So I removed those that were there earlier, the um, stock ones, which are just a steel and a hex head with a flange on them. And uh, I put a stainless washer and a stainless screw, machine screw. So, same thing on this side. Again, I'll change out that hardware. There may be a bit of hardware I change out. I, I really like the um, stainless. So you can see I went ahead and installed the steering wheel. I figured, you know, we're probably done here messing with uh, the dash so we could get the steering wheel put on. I did put some antices on all those um, flanges um, one of my splines, that's what I'm trying to say. And of course, I used a washer and, and a nut. I used a new nut, a stainless nut, and then um, got the cap there to kind of cap things off. I think it looks pretty darn good. And uh, so, yeah, looks good. I'm glad I brought that down. You can see it is wicked tight. I've actually bumped right there. I'm uh, not sure if in the process of making that panel, I've made something different. The, the, there's not a lot I can do as far as this coming out a little bit more on this end of the tractor because the muffler does that very same thing. If you look right down the line of it, the muffler actually angles out. So again, um, I'm waiting on a stainless pipe for that and we'll try to get that to where it looks decent. We still got stickers to put on. We still got the seat to figure out. I don't have any of those um, the rubber torsion spring. I cannot find them, and so I'm trying to seek a good solution that I can use my stock seat, which is sitting over there on my saw, and um, I'm trying to figure out a, a way to use that stock Thanks seat. Thanks for following along, guys. I think we made some pretty good progress. A short day, short work day, so pretty good progress for a short work day. I still got these back lights to, to mount up as well. Uh, I got quite a bit still left to do, but man, we are really cooking. I mean, it's, it's, getting, it's getting real. I'm going to try to get some antifreeze tomorrow, some automatic transmission fluid for a power steering pump, and um, I'm going to try to get some fuel as well, and we're going to try to fill up the radiator power steering pump, put some gas in it. I mean, we're ready to fire. We're ready to, to crank this thing over and maybe let it run for a little bit. I have not run this tractor since um, since we first started it up. If you watch the video on, um, you know, the first start in 30 years or something like that, I forget what I titled it. But I ran that tractor for about 60, I ran this tractor for about 60 seconds. And then I, um, I shut it off because I didn't have a belt on the water pump to to circulate the fluid and I didn't want to run it really long. Well, I said in that video, oh, I'm going to run in town and get a belt and, and let it run for a little while. Well, I never did that. Um, I ended up changing my mind and deciding I'm going to start tearing this thing down and I'm going to start rebuilding it and um, restoring it. And so <clears throat> I never have run it. So it literally hasn't run but one minute in my ownership. So I'm, I still don't know how well it will run. It ran like a sewing machine, honestly, when um, I did run it, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. I mean, I could have rear main seal leaking, even though it didn't appear to be leaking when I split the tractor. Well, it hasn't been run in maybe 30 years, possibly. 
Um, the, the, the lady I bought from said 30 years, so I don't know. Um, I still think there's a chance it could have run before then, but, but either way, I could have issues. I don't know if my power steering pump's going to work properly. Um, I rebuilt it, obviously, with an entire kit, but I'm not an expert on those things, man. I, I'm not 100% sure if I did it right. And um, so, you know, there's a lot of question marks still, so hang with me. Um, maybe on tomorrow's episode, um, this is probably going to be the end of this video, but um, maybe the next episode, um, we'll fire this thing up because I plan on doing that tomorrow. So thanks for watching, guys. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. Until the next video, God bless you.